I gotta say, it's actually pretty crazy to be playing Cyberpunk 2077 at 120 FPS on an Apple TV. Now, given we're streaming from my main gaming PC, but I never thought I'd be doing this on an Apple device. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation and gaming on the all new Apple TV 4K. Now before we get started, I do want to mention that this was a gift for Christmas from my wife. Now, she knows I do a lot of reviews, I get my hands on a lot of products, but she knew that I haven't ever kind of taken a look at an Apple TV, and to tell you the truth, I really haven't even given it a second thought. But you know, now that I've got my hands on one, I want to see exactly what we can do with this. Now, obviously, we can do some native TVOS gaming, but I'm actually interested in emulation on this. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen a really powerful Android TV box in a while, so uh, this is actually a good chance just to check this thing out. So basically what we're going to get in the box is the Apple TV itself. We get a remote and a power cable. That's about it. This is what they're calling USB-C remote because it recharges over USB-C instead of lightning. It's got a touchpad built in. And overall, the build quality on the remote is great. When it comes to the Apple TV here, this is kind of all constructed of plastic. And I didn't even notice we got another sticker here. And by the way, this is the 64 gigabyte model of the Apple TV. So we don't have Ethernet, but it does have Wi-Fi 6. And when it comes to the specs, it's actually packing some decent performance here, given that it's just a TV box. I mean, if we were to compare, you know, raw performance from the chip we have here to the NVIDIA Shield TV, which in my opinion is the best Android TV on the market right now, this would beat it in raw performance hands down. CPU and GPU. But you got to keep in mind, we've got a lockdown system here with tvOS. I guess that's what Apple is calling it. Not sure. Like I mentioned, this is the first time I've ever had my hands on one of these things. But when it comes to the CPU, we've got the Apple A15 Bionic, 5 cores up to 2.9 gigahertz, 4 gigabytes of RAM. You can opt for either 64 gigabytes of internal storage or 128. With that 128 version, you're also going to get Ethernet. But with this, we've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and it's running tvOS 16. And I want to make it perfectly clear, there's no extra ports on this. I was really hoping there was USB Type-C or something like that on the unit itself. Unfortunately, we've just got power and HDMI. So I need to go ahead and get everything set up here. I'm going to download some apps and try to sideload some emulators on this Apple TV. All right, so here we are. I've got everything set up. I've installed a bunch of games, and I've also sideloaded a few emulators that we're going to be testing out here. Uh, the remote isn't bad at all. It's got this little slide feature or this little touch function right here. But uh, if you do connect, let's say an Xbox controller, you can actually navigate the whole operating system here, which was kind of a surprise to me. Now, like I mentioned, we haven't seen a powerful Android TV box in a little while. I mean, basically since the Nvidia Shield came out and that came out years ago. Hopefully in 2023, we see something new, but uh, Nvidia actually just announced that they're going to be shutting down GeForce Now on the Shield TVs, which is a big letdown for a lot of people. Be it if you've got the Pro version or the Tube version, those are the most recent that came out. And I wouldn't run out and buy one of these to replace your Shield TV if you're already into a lot of emulation on your Android box, but there are ways to sideload emulators on this unit. You can use a third-party application called Alt Store and kind of just sideload right over. It's going to use your own Apple ID to kind of sign those apps. That's how I got a RetroArch installed here, and I also sideloaded another emulator, kind of uh, all-in-one emulator known as Province, which actually is really awesome. We'll take a look at those by the end. But unfortunately, at the time of making this video, there's no Apple TV version of something like Dolphin iOS, which is a great Dolphin emulator for the iPad and iPhone. And we do have enough power to run those games at full speed here. Unfortunately, I just can't find a TV version of that app that I can sideload on this unit. But if you take a look at the RetroArch website, you can actually find the tvOS version of RetroArch. And uh, we'll just go into information here, just to show you that we're really on this Apple TV. And I believe this is on tvOS 16.2. I did the update that was uh, available right now. And with RetroArch, I mean, there's tons of systems that we can emulate at full speed on this, but we just can't do the high-end stuff like PSP, Dreamcast, and GameCube right now. Hopefully in the future those cores are added, but uh, basically we can go up to like N64 and Sega Saturn here, and they run really well. But the first thing I wanted to take a look at was some native tvOS gaming. And uh, if you've got Apple Arcade on your iPhone or iPad already, all you need to do is sign in with that same account and it'll transfer over here. And you can download a bunch of games that have no ads and no in-app purchases, and there's actually a few really good games here to play. 
like Horizon Chase 2. It's actually really fun if you're into these arcade racers. And again, no ads, no in-app purchases, so you can actually go through the whole game and unlock everything just by playing it like we really should be able to do with every game that's out on the market. And another thing I should mention is all of these Apple Arcade games do support controllers, so you can actually connect your Xbox controller or your PlayStation controller and play all of these. Another one I've enjoyed playing is Samurai Jack. I've always been a huge fan of Samurai Jack, and uh, having a game here is actually pretty cool. It was also released on PC, and this is basically the same exact thing here on the Apple TV. And of course, we've got Dead Cells, so this is one that was recently added to Apple Arcade. I've already purchased this on PC, and it runs really good on this. Not a super intensive game, but you know, if you watch my channel, you know we've tested some lower end PCs that this game here can't even hit 60 FPS on. But this uh, native Apple TV version runs great. So obviously we can play these native TV OS games just fine on the new Apple TV 4K, but we've also got some game streaming apps that we can download. You can pick up Moonlight from the App Store, but the one I personally like to use is Steam Link. And this does have Wi-Fi 6 built in, so as long as you've got a decent router in the house, you should have a really good experience. Now with this, I can actually do 1080p 120fps from my main gaming PC. And this is definitely a lot different from cloud gaming because we're not hitting up somebody else's servers. This is actually all happening in home, so uh, we have very minimal latency here when you're connected to the same network. And I can stream it up to 100 megabits with the router I have right now which does offer really great performance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this at 50 megabits, 1080p, 60 FPS, and uh, this is gonna connect directly to my gaming PC. And as you can see, with the latest beta update of Steam, we've actually got that Steam Deck UI or GamePad UI instead of Big Picture. And I'll just show you that we really are on this TV here. So we've got that Steam Deck look here streaming over to the Apple TV. And I can play all of my favorite PC games here as long as my computer can handle it. And one that I've been playing a lot recently is Spider-Man Miles Morales. So we're going to go right in here. And I've been testing this out quite a bit. It actually works very well. And basically, I can just set this Apple TV up anywhere in the house and play my favorite PC games, and I don't have to move my PC around at all. I can leave it directly where it is. Hey, B, headed your way. Did I miss the convoy? Not yet. There's still security. But now it's time to take a look at some emulation using RetroArch, and we'll just head right in here. It does support that Xbox controller that I have connected over Bluetooth. And as soon as you boot it up, it'll tell you exactly how to add your games. You can add them over network. It's actually really easy to do. To tell you the truth, I'm not exactly sure how many emulators are supported here, but uh, it's definitely over 40 different emulators. Might be a little more than that, but from the core section, we can just keep scrolling. It will support MAME, it supports FBA, Neo Geo, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, NES, PC Engine. All of the lower end stuff will be supported by RetroArch, and this has more than enough power to emulate all of that just fine. But in this video, we're just going to take a look at a few here. Uh, we'll start out with some Game Boy Advance. So if I head back to the main menu, I've already imported a few games. And as you can see, it does download artwork for me. We'll go with this, then we'll move over to some PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn. Then we'll move over to a totally different emulator and test out some N64 there. So obviously, when it comes to these lower end emulators, I mean, this thing's going to run them at full speed. Game Boy Advance isn't going to be an issue for this Apple TV here, and as you can see, it's running really well. We could add some shaders if we want to, I just kind of left it stock, and I do have the FPS up at the top right hand corner. Moving over to some PlayStation 1, we've got Bloody Roar 2, one of the harder ones to emulate. Really great performance, and by the way, I did turn the sound off, or I turned the music off because it is copywritten. And the final emulator I wanted to show off here in RetroArch was some Sega Saturn, and this is using Yoba Sanshiro. Really great performance. I've tested a few games, haven't had any issues with it. They're all running at 60, and this is a harder one to emulate. We've got Sega Rally's Championship. 
So RetroArch is great, and you know, when it comes to the interface, some people just can't get the hang of it. I completely understand. I mean, I've been using it for years, so it's not a big deal. But there is a newer emulator suite that works with the Apple TV known as Province, and this is actually really nice. Basically, support for the same stuff we have in RetroArch. Uh, it's actually using RetroArch cores. So there's thousands and thousands of retro games that you can play here, but we've got a super clean UI. Very easy to navigate. You can do it with a controller or the remote if you want to. You import your stuff over network and it'll automatically download your box art for you. We'll get right into some uh, N64 gameplay here with Killer Instinct. And N64 runs phenomenally on this Apple TV. I kind of expected it to, but uh, you know, it's kind of hit or miss with some devices. So overall, when it comes down to it, I mean, it's definitely a lockdown system. I really wish Apple would kind of come to their senses and let us kind of just flip the switch and sideload stuff at will like we do with Android. This definitely isn't going to replace my NVIDIA Shield TV anytime soon, unless Apple does allow us to sideload stuff. Then I could definitely see me switching over to something like this because we've got a lot more power than the Shield TV. It's just locked down. Now, uh, I've been trying to get GameCube up and running. Like I mentioned, I can't find a tvOS version of Dolphin iOS, but I know that it'll run it at full speed. As soon as I do, I will make another video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. You know, if you've got any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave some links in the description. You can basically pick these up anywhere. Amazon, Best Buy, eBay, it's really up to you. But like always, thanks for watching.